All right, it is seven o'clock. You guys ready to get started? I hope. Awesome. Welcome to Creatively Uncorked. My name is Josiah, and I will be your artist for today. We're doing this drama llama that you can see right up above my shoulder here. Um, if you have not painted with Creatively Uncorked before, I want to just tell you a little bit about what we do. We do uh, pr public and private events. So um, most days of the week, once this whole coronavirus thing is out of our way, most days of the week we do painting events at our studio where you can come on in, get a drink from our bar, and join us for the social event of the evening. We also do private parties. So if you ever have something you want to celebrate, like a birthday party or really whatever, give us a call because we want to party with you and add some paint, add some art to your celebration, whatever it is. Um, right now, virtually, we are located right here, what you're watching. We do these live events um, all week nights. And we also do virtual art kits where you can purchase the video and the stencils and stuff. And we also do these art kits to go, which I'm going to show you in a moment once I switch the screens over. We do have two rules here at Creatively Uncorked, and they're nice and easy rules. I like to think of them just as pro tips on how to have a good time. And the very first one is have fun. We do fun art here at Creatively Uncorked, not fine art. That's what we like to say. So even if this painting tonight is not going to be a masterpiece that you want to hang up above your fireplace for 20 years, um, we just hope that you have a good time with it and a great experience. Rule number two is no negativity. Um, we have all of our day to be negative. So while we're here and while we're doing art, we just ask that you leave all of that behind you. So if that means getting a snack right now, grabbing a drink, turning on some background music, whatever it is, take a moment to kind of set the scene for yourself. Just take a t few deep breaths and join me in a zero negativity painting class, okay? Let me switch this screen over here. There we go. So I've got my canvas already pre-sketched. I'm just going to go over all of our materials here. So if you don't have yours already sketched, go ahead and scribble that on real quick. Or do your best at freehanding as we go. We have our brushes. I have a half inch filbert brush and a small round. And these guys are really important to us, okay? So we make everybody that paints with us at Creatively Uncorked take our brush pledge. So if you'd grab those brushes, hold them up in the air, and repeat after me like you mean it. I will not let paint dry on my brushes. When I am not using my brushes, I will put them in my water cup. All right. Me and your brushes, thank you. That's just to make sure that we can get lots and lots of paintings out of those. So we have our canvas, our brushes, paper towel, and a water cup. And right here, we have our paints. By the way, hello, Julie. Now I can greet you by name. I'm glad you came back for another painting. Anybody else that hasn't left a comment yet, I'd encourage you to do so. It's, it's great to meet you guys and talk to you in person, virtually in person. But it's good to have names. Um, so here are our paints. If you got one of our art kits, you'll be using the same type of paint as I have today. This is non-toxic, water-soluble acrylic paint. So non-toxic just meaning that it is safe for your paint-eating kids. Uh, water soluble, it just means that we'll be using water throughout our process today to thin out the paint. Um, so I'll, I'll point that out kind of as we go. It also means if you get it on your nice sweater, in case you forgot your painting shirt today like I did, um, you can just kind of douse it in water if you catch it right away. Our colors for today, and I know if you tuned in earlier, you already heard all this. We have our white paint, black paint, bright red, uh, chrome yellow, and phthalo blue. All right, one last thing real quick, and that is our art kits to go. These are pretty awesome. You can either pick them up at our studio or we can ship them right to you. Flip this pizza box right open and you get the written instructions, as well as if there's a video like this one you're watching right now, it'll have the link to that right here. It tells you all the paints you need. You'll have the paint and the brushes, as well as a sketch canvas. So you can find those at our website at creativelyuncorked.com. All right, thumbs up. You guys ready to go? Let's hop on in. If you have any questions, 
please leave those in the comment section. I will be checking that as often as I can. So that's the best way to kind of bridge this gap that we have. I'm just looking into a camera. But if you guys talk to me, then at least we can see and make sure that you guys are caught up in understanding everything I'm saying. So we are going to start with the half inch filbert brush here. There we go. Go ahead and dip that in the water. And we're going to scoop up some white paint. And we're going to be doing this lovely background that you can see on the example up here in your top left of your screen. By the way, if I'm ever covering up any details, like right now I'm hiding the entire llama, if you wanted to see it, you can peek on over here at this camera, okay? So in case I'm being too clunky with my hands, that's, that's how you can see the painting. So we pulled some white off to a clean spot of our plate. And let's add some yellow to it. So we have this nice light banana yellow. And what we're going to do now is start up in the top area here. If you look on that example, you'll see that it's a light green background. And we are going to be making this green. Instead of just using a green out of our bottles of paint, we're going to be mixing this green as we go. So green, as I'm sure you guys have heard, is yellow plus blue. But whenever we're mixing paint, the lighter color, or the darker color, rather, carries more weight. So if we start with the lighter color here, which is yellow in this case, and fill in the area that we want to be brighter, we'll be able to darken it up a little bit and turn it to green. So now once we kind of get that highlight there, we can add a little dot of blue into this. Mix that into your light green, and let's keep going. And I'm using these vertical brush strokes. Of course, where we have areas like this, it's going to be a lot easier if we angle it. And we'll have to break out of those vertical brush strokes for a moment. But then follow it up with some vertical ones. And don't forget to work on both sides at the same time. And if you'd rather use this for any of these areas, like between these leaves, it might get kind of tricky getting all that detail with the filbert brush. So go ahead and switch to the tiny one whenever you want to. All right, once we have a little bit of a base coat on there, let's go ahead and start adding some vibrant colors into here. So I'm going to start by adding a bit more blue. This time I'm dipping just straight from that blue and adding that to the outsides of what I was working with. This is my favorite way to do a painting, where we're just blending the colors on the canvas live instead of mixing them all beforehand. And I know you're probably thinking, this painting is not supposed to have blue there. You would be correct. We are going to turn this to a green in just a moment. We're just going to be alternating between blue and yellow. And it'll be balancing out in the in between, making that nice green color. So since we're blending like this and we're mixing different colors together, we're all going to be having very different paintings at every step of the way. And that is half the fun, you guys. So don't compare it to mine and say, mine isn't looking quite like that. It shouldn't be. So then I'm just dipping in, grabbing some fresh yellow, and adding that on top. So 
So our three colors that we're using right now are yellow, blue, and white. And you can just jump between them as needed. So right here, we got some nice greens. And the reason I love to blend it like this, and now you can really see it, is we have these areas where it's very blue, and we have areas where it's really bright yellow. But if it's getting too dark, let's just add some fresh white in there, brighten it up, especially this top area. We want that to be pretty bright. I was asking if you can slow down a little. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. We'll go ahead and slow the painting down a little bit here. So right now, and, and do find your own pace with this, but we're just jumping between the colors as needed. So wherever you have areas where there's a lot of blue and you want it to be more green, add some more yellow in there. If it gets too yellow, add some more blue. If it's not dragging along the canvas, or not gliding along the canvas, rather, add a bit of water to it. And if you're finding a technique with this that's a little bit different than what I'm doing, that's totally fine. Whatever works for you. So we can add some more fresh yellow into areas that we want to be a little bit brighter. And the reason I am kind of going a bit fast through this is because the, the paint will dry if we slow down at any spot. But one trick, if you're not quite able to keep up, just to be able to keep that paint awake, is to add a little bit of fresh water into it. Not so much that it's dripping all over the canvas, but if you add a little bit of fresh water on there, you can keep those areas from drying up. So just continually kind of reassess the different areas and see which ones you want to make more blue, which ones you want more yellow. And we do want it to be a pretty streaky background but we don't want any stripes in it. Once again, we can add some fresh water to the paint there. If it was starting to dry a bit on us, add a little bit of water in there so we can slow the process down. If you're getting just too much paint in your brush, you can wipe the excess off on the side of your plate or dab it off on your paper towel. Especially if you were working with some of the greens or the blues and you wanted to switch back to yellow, you'll have to clean that out pretty good to keep it from being a green. All right. Thank you, Sarah, for letting, letting me know that I was painting that too fast. If anybody else is having that issue or any other questions, please let me know. I'm used to having a class that I can interact with and watch, so this is a bit of a learning experience for me too, so thanks for understanding. When you're ready though, and I will give you guys some time to catch up, but when you're ready, let's go ahead and just finish this off. This is gonna be the darkest area. It'll probably be our bluest green. So one of the things I really like about this filbert brush is that it can kind of feel how heavy your brush strokes are. 
You can start with that nice fine edge, for instance, and draw a really thin line coming down. And then as you press more firmly, you'll get a really thick line. And I'm just doing these vertical brush strokes, but I've seen some really cool different takes on this. So if you find that yours is kind of, if, if maybe it's uh, all becoming really smooth, go ahead and stick with that if you like that pattern. Or if you have more of a jungle pattern where all the brush strokes are going a different way, as long as it's consistent, it's going to look good, okay? So fill in the entire llama. And we'll, we'll take a couple minutes here before pressing onward. So once more, we're just using white, yellow, and blue to create this nice, vibrant green background with a really brighter, a brighter area here above the head and then some darker shadows with some more blue tones in them here along the bottom. Once you have that all filled in, we can make any more touch-ups that we want to. We can darken up some blue areas, especially down in here. We can clean out that brush and we can add some fresh yellow if we want it even brighter up here. Or we could even add a little bit of white to lighten up some areas. When you add the white, it does become lighter, but you kind of lose that vibrancy. And when you're all done with that step, go ahead and leave that brush in the water cup. And if you want to let me know that you're finished, go ahead and leave that comment there so I can kind of gauge how you guys are doing. Otherwise, we'll continue in just about three or four minutes, okay? By the way, I'd love to see how these turn out at the end. So if you want to snap a photo with your whole at-home art class and send it to Creatively Uncorked Facebook, I'd love to see how these turned out. One cool thing whenever we're doing these kind of animal cartoons is that they all get this, their own personality. I hand sketched this one right beforehand and I, the, the snout is a little bit different than the example that you see up at the top there. And I think it's going to have a bit of a different uh, attitude. So do watch with yours how the colors and the little subtleties in the eyes and stuff like that are really going to change the attitude of your drama llama. Mm -hmm. All right. Any feedback? Anybody need more time? I know if we haven't painted much before, blending is very difficult. So we got that out of the way right away, and I, I might have rushed through it a little bit, so my apologies. But we are taking our time here. So once again, that was just yellow, blue, and white. It can be helpful sometimes to mix a lighter green as kind of a middle tone, especially once we have a base coat on it, and just have a middle green that we can kind of fill in some of the areas if it's getting too messy or complicated. So that would just look like this. You can take the yellow, you can take some blue, get this kind of middle green, and 
fill in some of the middle areas here, leaving those dark shadows the way they are. And then you can adjust that color as you go. So you can darken it a little bit more and bring that down here. So that can be a nice trick to kind of simplify it. So if you have any finishing touches, that's a good way to do it. Just mix the perfect color you want right here and then bring it to your canvas. When you're all ready, go ahead and clean that brush out. Okay, let's go ahead and move on now. So get that brush really nice and clean. And we're going to mix a light blue here on our palette. So take a big scoop of white. This is what most of it's for. And add the tiniest little dot of blue to it. So like I was saying earlier about blending or mixing colors, a darker color carries more weight. So start with a tiny little dot of that. And then if we need to, we can always darken it up more. But we want a light blue that's just like that. It should look mostly white. This is going to be the fur color. So if you're a big fan of purple, you could even add the littlest tiny dot of red into that as well. Once we have that light blue, let's go ahead and fill in the body. And we don't have to worry about if we fill in the eyes or mouth. Um, we can fill those in right now, or we can avoid them either way as long as you can still see those lines, okay? So I'm going to start right up here on the head. And I know the color might not show up the very best because it's very light, it's very subtle. And go ahead and fill this all in. With this brush, when we're filling in around our lines, if we get a lot of paint on it, and then we press it out like this, so you actually press it down on its side so that the, brush, or the hairs on the brush kind of fan out, we can get a really nice fine edge there. So we've got both ears filled in, we've got the forehead here. And I like to kind of imagine that we're maybe brushing the hair on this llama. So we're pulling all of the lines, or as many as we can, downwards. And this is going to be really important when we're adding all those colors that you see in the llama. So why not practice now, right? So pull your lines down like you're brushing its hair. I'm going to darken mine up just a tiny bit. So again, we just add the smallest little dot of blue into that if you want it darker. A little bit goes a long ways. So find the color of blue that works for your painting. If you're trying to avoid those eyelashes, we can use this tiny brush to get right between them. Although as long as you can see those lines, we'll be able to add those on top of it later with that black paint. It'll cover really well. 
there's anything I'm saying that's confusing or if I'm rushing through this too much, just leave a comment. I'm trying to slow it down a little bit. Remember we have that nice sharp edge on this brush so we can create these hairs that kind of jut out from the body. So you pull it down with that blade on the brush facing vertic or up and down and just kind of jut those out. If the paint doesn't seem like it's gliding along the canvas, just add a little bit more water into it. It should go on nice and easy. There we go. We want the whole thing filled in with that light blue. So it's really light. You can probably barely tell that that's a blue. I'm looking at my screen here and I can barely tell. So that's a good sign. We want it to be subtle here. Leave a comment with the name of your llama. I want to see who has the best llama name. You might not know right away. Maybe once we add, like I was saying, they kind of gain some personality once we add the colors and get all the little details like the eyes and stuff. So we have this base coat of light blue here. So take a moment to finish up that step. And when you're ready, let's mix a little bit of a darker blue now. So we're just adding another small dot of blue into that white. We're trying to get a color for the snout here. So if you look up at that example, we've got that color there. So I want something like that for mine. So it's just a little bit of a darker blue now. We can call this sky blue. That looks like a sky blue to me. Or baby blue. So we have that color. And let's go ahead and fill in the snout. And we'll be adding all the details on there on top. So it's okay if we cover them up. But just keep track of where they were. Or if you'd rather try to avoid those lines, you can use a smaller brush and just be more careful around those lines. There we go. So we have our darker blue in there now. We're going to do one more thing with this dark blue. So if you finish that, just hold on for one moment. You don't need to wash your brush out just yet. OK, so what we're going to do, to, to do now is with this darker blue that we just made, add a little bit of water to it. And then to get a nice fine edge on this brush, I'm just pulling it off on the side of my plate. 
flipping it and pulling it off on the other. And we're just going to add a little bit of that darker fur texture. So if you look up in the top left there, there's a little bit of that texture that we can add just with this blue while we, while we have it out. So we can darken up a few areas. So the same as with our background, we have it darker down here. Let's go ahead and darken up the neck right there too. Adding in just a few gentle streaks of this blue. And now if you saw that, let me explain it real quick before you jump in and try to do that. So I'm using the blade on my brush. So it's facing vertically, that sharp edge. And I'm just barely touching the surface, so watch. Let me hold it at an angle there so you can see. Just barely touching the canvas, just going lightly over it. And I sometimes do like an up, an up, and a down, but you move, the, you move your hand a little bit. And it's okay if those are a little bit messy, as long as they're going up and down, because we'll be adding some other colors on top in a moment. You're also totally welcome to switch to this brush whenever. I find this one to be easier for that step, though. All right, and one more small detail with this light blue. I'm going to add the curve to the head in right here. So this is just to make that ear not be, not just blend right in there. So I'm going to add this dark blue right along the top there and then lift up my brush as I go. All right, when you're done with that step, just leave that brush in the water cup there. I'll give you guys a minute to catch up if you are still finishing that up. How are your paintings looking? I hope it's turning out well. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into the painting now. What I'm going to do now is mix a dark green for these leaves. So grab some blue and add some yellow to it. Looks like somebody's painting is turning out good. I'm glad. With three exclamation marks. Awesome. It's very good. I like the enthusiasm. Good. I'm glad, Sarah. I'm assuming that one is for you and both of the girls then. So that's really good. That's a triple. One exclamation mark for each one of you. That's good. So we're just mixing this dark green. And I love doing colors this way. We just have our really our bright primary colors here and we get to mix our mix our own green instead of just using one from a tube and part of the fun is that all of ours are going to turn out different so if you're painting with somebody right now nobody's going to have quite the same green so go ahead and mix that dark green and once you have it let's just fill in those leaves and once more I know I keep saying this but I know people sometimes feel trapped with just doing what I'm doing Grab this brush if you feel more comfortable with it. And let's go ahead and fill those leaves in. Being careful to avoid the flowers. So maybe on yours, if it wasn't, you might have not had um, all of these lines quite as solid. Or maybe you have an extra leaf up here. Just make sure you can locate where all the leaves are. And that we're not filling in the, those beautiful orange flowers with green.
And again, I'm still tracing the, the shape of this. So if you think of a leaf, it's probably got these two sides with that vein in the middle. So right here with this big one, I'm just trying to do one brush stroke along that side, another one along this side. All right, and then it kind of creates that vein actually. So those subtleties can go a long way in pushing you past uh, just starting painting to, hey, I'm actually kind of good at this. Go ahead and fill those leaves in with that dark green. Do we have anything we can give out tonight, Shanna? Do you want to? I don't know. <laughs> um. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I'm really getting into the painting mood. And one thing that we've done on some of these live events is we'll do a bonus painting at the end of the night. So when this class wraps up, um, I'm willing to do that if you guys want to stick around. Leave in the comments what you want me to paint. Um, I'll pick my favorite one and do a painting and we'll try to cram it into 15 minutes, we'll say. We'll do a quick 15 minute painting, see how it turns out. and. Um, Pick one of you guys to give it to if you want, if it turns out any good. We'll see. So if you want to stick around and join me for that, do so. I know we have a small group tonight, but it'd be a fun way to paint a little bit longer if you guys want to. So leave those comments. I'll be, I'll be watching for those. Or let me know if you're even interested in that. OK, so I hope you all have had a chance to catch up now. And we can keep going. So let's go ahead and get these flowers done. And we get to blend yet again, or mix yet again, another color. So let's grab some yellow, pull it off to the side, and add a little dot of red. So once more, the darker color we need less of, in this case, red. And pick your favorite color here. So it could be, it could be closer to yellow. I really like this yellow-orange. Or you could add in a bit more red, and it could be a darker, deeper orange. Once you have the orange that you want, let's go ahead and fill these flowers in. It's kind of the same thing we were just doing with those leaves. So again, I'm using this really bright yellowy orange. You can darken it up with some red if you want. And you might ha not have all of the petals of these sketched on there. That's OK. Just try to figure out where they are and guess which ones are on top of which ones. It's OK if it's a bit sketchy and we can't tell exactly what's happening. There we go. Oh, there we go. Just leaving that message up on the screen there. So I will be giving away, I'll be doing a 15 minute painting at the end of this of whatever you guys want to and giving that away to whoever has the best name for their llama. My choice. So stick around if you want to do that.
So we just fill those in with our light, or our orange. It could be a darker orange. All right, let's go ahead and add some more color now into our painting. So with this step, I'll be adding the colors I want to in here, but this, you can really add any color you want to, okay? So since we just did that orange, let's go ahead and add that one in first. And keep in mind as we do this, that we're going to add quite a few colors into this background. So make sure that we're not you know, if we're starting with the orange, make sure you're not adding 20 orange streaks in there, okay? We won't have enough room for the other colors, and we'll have an orange llama. So we take our first color, in this case, orange, and just add a couple of streaks. And there are some places we want to avoid, okay? So before you go crazy, we're trying to avoid the very center of the face. So look up here at that example to see what we're going for at the end. We want them to be kind of in the darker areas of the fur here. You can have it kind of come closer to the eyes a bit, especially where we want it to be a bit more shadowed. And we can add them into the ears, okay? But avoid, for the most part, the center of the face. So add a few orange ones. Let me balance it out by adding a few here into the ears. We don't want to create any patterns with these. So if you look at what I just did here, I've got a tiny one up on the top and then a bigger one down here on the bottom. So we don't want it to be totally even on every side of the body because it's supposed to just be, I'm assuming, disco lights, right? These are all crazy techno lights shining on the llama. It's not actually that the llama has uh, dyed fur. But maybe it does. I don't know. Let your imagination go wild. So we added a few orange ones. What color should we do next? Let us do some, some uh, yellow, just a couple of yellow. So I clean my brush out a little bit, and I'm just going to add, I'm just adding three streaks of yellow, because I don't want to go too crazy with these uh, warm colors. I've got quite a few of them already. And if this brush was giving you trouble with those, we've got the tiny one. Don't forget. All right, let's go ahead and add some pink. So grab this red, pull it off to the side, and add a little bit of white. So we pulled a little bit of red off to the side, added a little bit of white. Let's add a few pink um, lines in here. These colors can be whatever you want, okay? So if there's one of these that I add that you don't want to, or one that I don't mention that you want to add, that's totally fine. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this red just as it, as it is as well, just because the pink doesn't seem quite as bright as I wanted it to. There we go. All right, we have just a few more colors we're going to add in here. So next, I'm going to make a purple. So I'm grabbing a little bit of this red, pulling it off to the side, and adding a little bit of blue to it.
Let's go ahead and add some of this in. And since this color is really nice and dark, I want some of it to be right up against the edge here. I think that looks really pretty. And notice I'm, I'm varying the size of my brush strokes a bit. So I was doing a lot of really short, choppy ones. But every now and then we can do a really long brush stroke too. It's nice to, to mix that up. And make sure we're leaving some areas that are white or that light blue. We don't have any of these bright colors coming in. Because these are kind of the shadows and highlights, okay? So it's just as important where we add them as where we don't add them. And you know what? I think I am maxed out for colors on my llama. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of this purple. But if you want to, if you still, maybe, maybe you didn't do quite as many lines per color. So if you have some more room, you could add some white to this purple and do a lighter purple. You could also, what other colors could we add in here? Really any colors you want. You can go back to any of those colors too if you really liked it and didn't add quite enough, you're realizing. And once more, when you're all done, leave that brush in the water cup. And we're actually all done with that brush now. So I'm taking ideas for that final painting if you guys want to leave a comment. I'll just give you guys a couple minutes. Let me know if, if um, you are ready to move on, but I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to finish up those streaky colors in the background. And one really cool thing with acrylic paint is that it can cover itself up really well. So if you went too crazy with these colors and now your llama is just a rainbow, you can go back in, mix some light blue, and add that bit back in on top. And then those other colors will just be seen in the shadows and the areas you don't do it. And maybe then you want to add more color back in. So you can kind of do a back and forth. And eventually, after 15 coats of paint, you'll have the llama that you want. It's been known to happen, you guys. All right. What was that? No. Yeah, keep checking that. All right. Let's go ahead and move along now, OK? So I'm going to add one more detail into these flowers. An owl. Ooh, who said that? That was Judy. Judy, I like that. So far, it's uh, the only option that I have. So it might end up being an owl. So I'm going to grab a little bit of red. Something fun. What about a fun owl? Ooh, a butterfly. So grab some red. Add a little bit of water to it. And I'm just going to add a bit of shadow around these flowers, the, the petals on them. If you think, if, if you did a lighter orange like mine and you don't want to go all the way to this really dark red, you can mix just a darker orange as well. Same step though. I'm just going to add these kind of along the outsides of these petals. So this is where we can kind of show which ones are on top of which ones. A unicorn picture. Cool. We're getting a lot of votes now. I like it. And remember to win that. So I'll, I'll be painting one of those. But to win it, I want to see what you are naming your llama. And I'll pick my favorite name. So I'm just outlining these a bit with some red. It's a pretty subtle thing there, so let me kind of zoom in. There we go. So we're just adding a little bit of red there. I actually did the reverse of zooming in. And then with that same color, 
with that red. Let's just fill in the center of each flower. And going back to those, those subtleties that will really set your painting apart, if you, you can just fill this in with a, uh, with a dot, but you could also do a whole bunch of little dots in, within that dot, and it'll create a bit of that kind of pollen texture in the actual paint. So you probably can't tell from far away, but if you look at it closer then, you'll see a bit of a pollen-y kind of look to it. And when you're done with that, go ahead and clean that brush out, leave it in your water. Lola. Oh, that's the name for your llama. Lola the llama. I'm not going to tell you whose it is. Okay. Oh, that's good. I can't see you guys' names, so I can't pick favorites. So. Oh, yes, it's a blind vote. I like that. Lola the llama is pretty good. I struggled to say it, but it's cute. Now, let's go ahead and outline the detail here on the snout. So I'm just going to use this blue, just as it is right here. This is our thalo blue. If you went for a more purple tone on your llama, you can make this into a darker purple, or maybe you even have some of that left from earlier. And as always, we want a little bit of water in it. Let's go ahead and outline the different areas here. And just in case you lost your details at some point in there, if, if they got covered, I'll break it down step by step. So right here we have this oval. It's kind of a rectangular oval. But this side we can actually have it go a little bit more circular. Alright, the next thing that we have are these two sides of the, these are the cheeks, I guess. And just bring it down to where it connects to the bottom jaw. And then in case you lost all of the detail there, it's going to be right in between, right in the middle of those two and go up just a little bit and put a dot there. And then connect those with a nice curve. So if you want, you can start further up and kind of trace that and then continue that curve, connecting it to that dot. And do that on both sides. Then we just want a line that goes straight through that middle. And with this tiny brush, do be careful not to press down too hard. So if I'm really jamming it down, I'm going to get a really thick line. But if you spiral onto the paint and you barely touch the canvas, you can get a really nice thin line like that. Then we can outline the bottom jaw here. And a lot of the really small things are going to change, again, like I said, the personality. So if you notice on mine, the jaw, it looks like it's, um, or the expression on the face, the jaw, it looks like he's uh, a little bit off to the side there, maybe he's chewing something. It really, it does change the emotion. All right, and then lastly, we've got these two dots right here at the bottom. Just go ahead and connect them to that bottom section there. 
and then clean that out. We are almost at the end now. We are going to be adding a little bit of white detail and the black in the eyes. And that is it, okay? So if you have any things that you want, um, what was I going to say? Any areas that you want me to talk about, any questions that you have, go ahead and leave those in the comments now so I don't on accident miss those. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and clean that brush out. And we're going to add a couple of white details onto here. So just grab some white paint. And again, we're spiraling this off to get a nice fine point on that brush. And let's add some white highlights onto these leaves. So it's just a really tiny brush stroke along the top edge of it. So we're reflecting the sunlight up here. Keep those really thin. We'll do the same thing on the petals. And we don't have to get it on every single petal. But make sure it's on the side facing that bright light. Let me go ahead and zoom in there. There you go. So we've got some white detail on the petals of the leaves, or the petals of the flowers, and on those dark green leaves with that bright white. And notice I'm going with the curve on all of those areas. So tracing the curve out from the inside. All right, I'm going to manu manually zoom back out. Zoop. And there's one more spot I want to add some of this white detail. And that is here on the snout. So I'm going to add a little bit along the top of that nose. A nice curved solid line there that flattens out at the very top. And this makes these areas look shiny. So the petals were shiny, the leaves were shiny, and the snout is going to be shiny. The fur, not so much. So that's why we're not really adding it in there. Now we can add these lines coming down here on both sides. And I'm sticking them pretty close to the, to the outsides there. And then go ahead and clean that out. So we have one more step, and I have a few ideas of what to paint. Maybe we should try combining all of the ideas. It should be a uni unicorn owl with butterfly wings. Who knows? All right, last detail here. Tiny brush, grab some black paint.
And let's go ahead and add these eyelashes in. So you probably already have an outline for it. If not though, go ahead and just start at that center dot. So we've got these two center dots here. And the very top one we want to go completely flat. Okay? And ideally we're pulling away from that center dot. So we're pulling out and then you lift up the brush at the very end to get a really fine point for that eyelash. Then we're going to do the same thing going down right here at about a 45 degree angle. So pull that down and then lift up as you get to the tip there for a nice sharp eyelash. And then we'll just keep doing that to fill that in. And I know sometimes we'll look at these things and just go, oh yeah, I can just scribble that. But if you do each one individually, when people look at that, they're going to feel that. They're going to see that you cared and that you tried to get that detail. So do take your time with these. And just pulling out from that center and lifting at the very end. And then do take a look at yours and see how even they look. So mine, I've got a bit more of a perfect um, split between those over here and less so over there. So instead of complaining that I messed up on this side, I'm just going to balance it out so it looks natural. So I'm just going to fill this one in a little bit more. And now they look like they go together. The last thing that we can do with this black paint is just add a little bit of an outline around the, the llama if you want to, okay? So this is optional. Watch me before trying this. See if you like it and then go ahead and add it if you want. So I can just add a little bit of a scribble on the outsides of some of this fur. So I'm just kind of pulling this gently away. And you can skip areas too, so it's just a few shadowed areas. So again, this is optional, adding that black. It's just one way to make the llama stand out a bit more against that background. And while we're at it, you could add that black outline.